for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? Oh, pardon. Since a crooked figure may attest in little place a million, let us ciphers to this great account on your imaginary forces work. Suppose within the girdles of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies whose high upreared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts and into a thousand parts divide one man. Make imaginary puissance. Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth for it is your thoughts that now must take our kings. Carry them here and there, jumping over time, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me, chorus to this history, who, prologue-like, your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play.